What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Basement Show. We got Rich filling in for Ramon here with the sweat rag and all. And dude, I love the hat. I'm really feeling the hat. Yeah, gotta rock the hat, man. We got Steve back, fresh off of his surgery. Everybody hey. kick him in the foot right now. And we have Hal Johnson, esteemed author of The Immortal Lycanthropes, which is sitting right in front of us. Hal 9000, thanks for being on the show, Thank man. Good to much. have you. Does he dream? And of course, you know me. I'm the loud guy in the Robin hat. So I guess you know what we're already going to be talking about, which is Batman Incorporated 8. But before we do, as promised. Where'd you pull that from? You wouldn't you like to know? Welcome back, Steve. You want to smell this? I would not like to know. I have in front of me the wonderful, glorious, and very generous contributors to our Indiegogo campaign, and they are in no particular order. Arlene Andrades, Kristen Barone, William Parker, Michael Maloney, Kristen Vogel, John Fusa, Eddie D'Angelini, Astra Bagazunas, Clyde Oduka, Rob Christofferson, I wonder if you're related to Chris, James Slattery, Rick Hansen, Bill Beanie, Edwards Milton, Dennis Murphy Jr., Damian Crocker, John Humphrey, J.K. Woodward, Ken Brodzinski, Mary Kenny, our very own Adam Wieson, our very own Patricia Charles, our very own Stephanie Sachi, Maria Ayalano, our own Let Letitia Sotero, Jenny Gates, and finally, the Batman. Thank you all. Thank you all. The Batman. Do you want to know his name? Would have made a lot more money. Would you like to ride with the Batman? <laughs> hmm. It's probably a. I want deal. to know his name. Is it an actor? Batman. Bruce Wayne. Indeed. We thank you all for your contributions, and your prizes will be on the way shortly. Please allow six to eight weeks for delivery, which is really just enough time for me to get off my fucking lazy ass and get to the post office. Now then, before we get to this week's comics, how? Tell us about the book. Hi, I wrote a book. Uh, is, that, is that, you want more? We, 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 yeah, well, yeah, first everyone, of all, there's a lot of animals exactly. on the cover. That's What's true. going on? So, I mean, yeah, everyone says you're supposed to have an elevator pitch, but I, I live in a walk-up, so I couldn't practice it. And it's, a, it's a book, it's a fantasy book. It's a young adult adventure novel about uh, people who turn into animals, and then uh, they go to this kid, and they're like, we know you can turn into an animal, too. And the kid's like, no, it's a lie, I don't know what you're talking about. And then they... Uh, they, they threaten Is this a natural chance. ability, or did they learn to do it? Well, so theoretically, and I don't want to spoil anything mm -hmm. here. No spoilers. No cheese is coming out. No cheese. The oh, idea is that the they are, uh, they, they, they have been immortal for a long time. Mm -hmm. they, they, they live a long time, and they can only be killed by the, the like claws or fangs or horns of other animals. Uh, so other? Other, <laughs> other immortal lycanthropes. So they're, they're immune to, you know, being shot, or, or they don't care so much, but... If the immortal wolf or lion comes and attacks them, then it uh, it, it could be curtains for them, and it's uh, and then then adventure ensues. It's it's kind of a my homage to 19th century boys' adventure fiction, which I like mm -hmm. a lot, and it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like cross between Highlander and Treasure Island, and uh, that's that's my story. That sounds really cool, actually. Uh, who's the main character? The main character is a kid named Myron Horowitz, and everyone makes fun of him because it's a terrible name. And also, he's do they make fun of him in the book, or do they just make fun of him to you? Both, well, mainly the book. Yeah. It's is this hard? Life. Did you na life. name him after anybody you know or anything? No, I don't know any name Myron or Horowitz, but I just thought it would be a good thing. I thought it would be a, a good burden to put on your character to make his life worse. Mm. Also, he's ugly. That's the other thing. That's fucked up, man. Really yeah, it's just it's really kid sad. kid doesn't win at all. No, but then he, maybe he gets to turn into some kind of animal. How long, how long did it take you to write it? It, take? it took like nine months, I guess, on and off. That's not bad at all. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. that bad. Yeah. It was not that long. It was 300 pages. When did you actually come up with the idea and said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to put this down on paper? Well, it's a weird... I, I, this is an idea I came up with like when I was like in seventh grade or something. But Those are the best ideas. Well, I thought it was a stupid idea, actually. Eventually, I kind of grew up and I was like, that's, that's dumb. But I... I was talking to this editor, and I was pitching ideas at the, the editor, and the editor shot everything down. And in desperation, I, I was dragging things from, from many years in my past, and I dragged this one up. And the editor said, go with that one. And then I, I sulked for a while, because I was like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I can still write that. That's, like a, that's an idea for a seventh, seventh grader. But then I, then I, I don't want to 
now I sound like it's a bad idea, but actually I got into it and then I got excited. No, I would definitely whatever, disagree but, with you if you thought it was a bad idea. Because, no, it's not, it's I mean, awesome we've idea. all written stories when we were kids and I think like the stuff that you come out with when you're a kid is just so much more pure as far as adventure and the fun aspect of it because you don't, you don't care as a kid. You're not second guessing yourself when you're coming up with ideas when you're a kid. You just want to have fun and that's where the ideas come from. Well, I'm hoping that like the ridiculous, awesome aspect of it comes across and that because I'm no longer in seventh grade, I, that there's actually more thoughtfulness and that the plot comes together in a way that is coherent, whereas you know, when you're a kid, you're, you're, all your ideas are scattershot. Right. The ADD kicks in. Mm. Yeah. Because we didn't have Ridland back then. Didn't know what it was? Mm -hmm. it we had Nintendo and exactly. like... And the fucking Spice Channel that you used to have to set onto the, the recall button. And DuckTales. Ooh! How'd you get DuckTales from the I Spice don't Channel? really know. What kind of porn are you fucking watching, man? You only want to know. No, I don't want to know. I, it was really just a rhetorical question. And this is your first book. It is my first. Yeah. Well, it's first. I, uh, Wait, good, good segue. <laughs> Way to bring yes. it back. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I've, I've written very. We were going little, down a dark path. Very little duck porn. I really don't have that in my past. Howard the Duck. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> this, this is the first book I've. I've Does heard. anyone turn into a duck? No. Only that's, only mammals, as you can really see from the uh, cover. I actually. Oh, yeah. Asshole. Oh, that's uh, good. yeah. Sorry about that, Hal. No worries. It uh, we're back. Rich is not usually a klutz. It's the hat. It is what it is. It is the hat. It's he couldn't really see where he was going. All I'm glad is my whiskey's back here. But uh, as, as we were speaking, uh, I did not pick up on the fact that there were only mammals on the cover. I just thought that they made you know more interesting looking characters than, say, your average chicken. It's true, and I guess that I can't actually promise that every animal depicted on this cover appears in the book. But there are a significant amount of uh, lycanthropes. Yeah, yeah, and I guess if you're a purist or some kind of pedant, then you would say that lycanthropes can only be werewolves. Werewolves, which right. is what I thought originally. Yeah, but... Because uh, of lycan? Because of the... Yeah, because it's, it's Greek for yeah. wolf man. Right. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I, and I assume we all agree that the Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual is kind of a good authoritative source for things, and uh, that has lycanthropes covering, like, werebears and were-tigers. So, inspired by this, and with the caveat that the word theranthrope does appear inside the book. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, who wants to read about a lot of werewolves? There are actually zero werewolves. Would you book. call them were all were creatures? Just that, like, just I, if you, I, even if I don't care if you call them in the book, but as from your own personal standpoint, would you say that would be like a were rhino or yeah, a were yeah, totally. Hmm. There are so many were camels. That's awesome. Well, actually, there's only two: one Bactrian and one Dromedary. A were camel. That's really crazy. He chased that guy in the desert, and he just he just doesn't die. He just keeps going. That is so awesome. Were camel tail. Beware. 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 Oh. Oh. Hmm. Hal, lots of luck with the book. Thank you so much. Please buy this where, book. Where can they get it? Please. You will find this book on uh, Amazon for sure. Yeah, right? yeah. If you go to Midtown Comics Times Square, there are signed copies available. And if you find me in the street, I would I, I sign into a sketch. And uh, just you know, if you see him like riding by, just be, just tackle him. He'll he'll totally dig it. Don't yeah, I, would, I love. Tell him to no, do don't that. tackle. No, don't. No, don't. don't. Please don't tackle. Just kind of just wave him down. Possibly lift your shirt up. Something if like you're that. A girl. Get his attention. What? You said raise your shirt up. No, he he has a real live girlfriend. I can't just say like if only if they're a girl. What if lift it's your a really shirt big up? boy, I would recognize. He would it was a sign. he would see that yeah. more. So I think. I, honestly, like, let's say if he wrote "I love Hal" on his yeah, I think that's I think that should really happen. I get that a lot. You are a great guy. I, I'm sure a lot of people love you. Thank you, Pete. No doubt. We've actually known Hal for uh, quite some time. He captains the flagship store at Midtown Comics, where we go to pick up our books regularly. So we've run into Hal quite so often, and it's it's a shame that you've only gotten on the show this you know finally now. Um, I did actually have to hit him with a brick and throw a burlap sack around him. And I was going to say, what took so long? Yeah, yeah no, he, he puts up a good fight. He really does. You know what? The he's, show is, he's squirrely. The show has been building up for this day just for I Hal. completely agree, yeah. actually. Oh, that's awesome. This is yeah. the climax. Thank you for building right, Thank you for being on the show. And unlike, um, you know, like when JK's on the show or we, we get a couple of other guests that sometimes don't read the comics, Hal is a genuine nerd as well. Yep. So he will be uh, joining in our conversations that will follow because kind of what we do on this show is we review comics and stuff. Is that That's, what we um, do? Yeah. Yeah. No. Are you saying JK doesn't read the comics? I thought it was just you. JK draws all the time. He doesn't get to read everything. 
So he, he, you know, JK's great and he sits here and he listens to us and usually yells at me. But he doesn't always know exactly what we're talking about because God bless the fucking guy. He just draws his ass off all the time. He's always locked in his studio. I don't know how the hell he does it because it took me like four weeks well, just easy. to make just, the one page. And just, this guy cranks out books like left and right. Page after page after page. I don't know how he does it. I can't do it. Nah. He doesn't sleep. So. Sleeps for the week anyway. So... Let's talk about Batman Incorporated 8. Do we have to? We absolutely have oh, to. Yes. It's the talk of the town, man. Okay, Fucking first, Robin's dead, bro. Oh, no, That's not on. even a spoiler. Can I bring up something first? Of course you can. I got really pissed off that all the spoilers started hitting, like, what was it, Monday morning? The New York Post yeah. broke it on Monday. That was ridiculous. I used to it get mad like... when the Post would break it on Wednesday before comic stores opened, because I thought it was ridiculous that... That you you can't read the book; it's already breaking. But two days ahead of time is even worse. That's like come on, you didn't even give what, it a chance. What were they saying? <laughs> they basically were like, I don't, I didn't read the article because I was trying to avoid it. That shit hit CNN. Are you kidding? Swear me? Swear to God, because we've never had a Robin die before. Well, no, this is. It's funny you bring that up. Um, by or, the way, cheese. Going on a sub. I mean, really? <laughs> it was on fucking CNN. It was in the Post. It was in every newspaper across the fucking country. And it was in the headlines, so you couldn't even. And yeah, you read can't the, avoid it. Something was going to happen. Every newspaper? The, I had. It was in every newspaper? Every newspaper. I'm going to commit you to that. Fine. I should be committed. <laughs> I could use a nice long vacation on the government's that. dime. Um, um, weekly World Days. I really like. Like, people were texting me, people who were not comic fans. Mm -hmm. And I love when they do this. They. Like, my friend Jean texted me. She's like. Robin died? How much time you got? It happened with <laughs> let me Let me explain this to you as short and sweet as I possibly can. He's not the Robin you know. Dick Grayson is alive and well and fighting crime is Nightwing. She's like, who? Yeah. Don't go there. My cousin texted me. She's like, I just finished watching the Amazing Spider-Man movie. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't read comics at all. She knows I'm a nerd. And she's like, it was a cool movie, but who's Gwen? How much time you got? Opposed to MJ, I guess? She didn't fucking know. And, well, you know, like, know people come to me is, with though. these questions, and I want to answer them. The, the nerd in me is, it waits yeah, for these scenarios. She's easily explained. But you know that these people are not going to be the type of people They that don't give it. a fuck about the answer. Yeah. They just want the answer. Robin's dead. That's that. This is Peter's ex-girlfriend. She died a long time ago. But that, now, uh, that happened here's when the Cap thing. died, too, a couple years ago. When mm -hmm. Cap died, non-comic book people. My cousin Josette texted me. I'm in the diner getting breakfast with Cheeseburger Pete. And she's like, my condolences for Captain America. What? That's how I found out Cap was, that was dead. That was new and news. my ass raced there as soon as I got home before that book sold out. Did you eat first, though? I did eat. I told but you. But I, I had to go after work, man. I didn't fucking know. Yeah. This time, like, by the time I got to the shop, uh, all the, every variant, every, everything was sold out in, <clears throat> excuse me, of this book. I Couldn't thought my job was I had to go beg a friend, like, yo, let me read your shit at least. People fucking selling the damn thing on eBay for like 20, 30 bucks. Now, do you think they killed Damien because nobody likes him? Or do you think they, they, they were planning to do it anyway? Okay. Or you think Can I? Yeah. Because now this is, this is what I'm I so rarely get a chance to shut up. So, yes. yeah. Here's my thought. I don't think it actually, I think it's going to be, it's, it's going to turn out to be not actually. Uh, Spit it out. Dead? Yeah, well, yeah. That he's not actually a, dead. That it's actually, knife, you know, it's like some type of weird friggin'. Like alternate something or other, like it's it just it did like the 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 Batman the the nod to Batman six the sixties Batman Adam West if Bam like that, what that panel hell? really upset you yeah but like what like why was that in there that makes no why sense. why does Grant Morrison do a lot of the things he does now do you think it'll be a Jason Todd thing where he comes back probably possibly eventually well he, we, didn't they already establish the fact that he's a clone well how long Who's can I think there's a problem with Obviously, he's going to come back, right? Every yeah. character who dies comes back, right. but there's a, a credibility gap if he comes back too quickly, right? He'll come back as an adult. And like so at least should, Captain America stayed dead for you know, a while. year, year or two. But remember when Batman R.I.P. happened, and Batman stayed dead for... Ten minutes. Yeah, it was... Yeah. It was and then there was the whole Batmite and that little chartreuse oh. outfit that he mm -hmm. had on going. So if you're going to be dead for ten minutes, it just looks kind of ludicrous. And I think that they tried to generate a lot of interest in these deaths. This is this... You know, I mean, the New York Post didn't didn't uncover this with some kind of amazing, you know, snooping around in the in the DC archives. DC leaked this to them. Oh right? yeah. yeah. So this is supposed this to be a news story, right? But if you if you keep leaking stories that are non stories, like Batman, Batman, Death of Batman was not that big. I think because 
it came right after Death of Captain America, and people kind of knew that it was something. It was they fake. had to drop something to compete. Well, yeah, they knew well, it was fake. This happens right after Amazing Spider-Man 700, which. <clears throat> Let's be honest. I mean, like, what was it? The, the those covers were going for like, if you went on the line, it was like thirty dollars a month for the regular for the editions. regular cover. And then you have the the what's his name? The Stan Ditko Lee, cover. The, the, I'm sorry, the Ditko cover Gino. was going for like twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. I bet all those people feel kind of. It's it's still hovering around eight nine hundred. Yeah, but still, you paid twelve for that. Yeah. I would, didn't. You, would you consider? I mean, Robin obviously is a main character, but would you consider him an, a main enough character that he, everybody's going to care? Here's my thing. I, Was he around long enough to care? Somewhat. I, I I'm not going to say I liked him, and the reason I didn't like him is because well, you know how I feel about Morrison, but it kind of galled me as a bit egotistical that this guy took his own creation, which was an Elseworld story and a good Elseworld story, mm -hmm. and made it official canon in the Batman universe. That to me is, that's a little egotistical. Mm -hmm. But it seems like he did it with the intention of eventually killing him, which I'm okay with, because let's, let's look at it in this retrospect. Forget the fact that he'll probably come back later on, because it'll, it'll kind of complete the story. But as of now, the Batman's fucked up in the head. He lost his parents. The and that's what drives him. It's what motivates him completely every day of every year. Now he lost his son. Now he, it's the only thing that could ever be worse than losing your losing your parents is as a parent you losing lose your, your child. Right. And you know the, the old say no parent should ever have to bury a child, and now he will. And this can only be good for Batman himself as a character because this can only drive him down a much darker, darker path. Darker, much darker. Wait, and that that's where he saying, belongs. Or is that just from the Lord of the Rings movies? I get, I didn't, I don't know if I'm... Oh, right, he got, I'm sorry. Movie, but maybe it was. I, I thought I had that from a different movie, but I was quoting a movie. Yeah. But I've got a lot of shit running around in there. It happens, keep going. But I, I believe Batman should be a very dark, very foreboding character. And this can only be beneficial. Well, why not? Why and not kill him in Death of the Family then? Death of the Family, rather. They should have. They really should have. Why have this random asshole just? But you know what? Here, here's the other thing. I, I agree with you. They should have had the balls to do it. But if they did at that point, he would have had to kill the Joker. And they can't kill the Joker. There's definitely no. They could have probably wrote around it, like he fell off the cliff or something like that. Or maybe he he. If he jumped off the cliff and deprived Batman of killing him, and that fucking m flipped him out, that, would be, that probably that would have be been good. a better story. Yeah. See, I just came up with that now. I could have wrote that better. Yeah. But isn't this exactly analogous to Batman R.I.P., where Batman, they're, they're leading up, he's supposed to die in R.I.P., he doesn't die, he is killed by Darkseid like one month later, and doesn't, I mean, he doesn't stay dead for long at all. That's but here you have, this, you have the story, Death of the Family, kind of implies Robin's going to die, he doesn't, you're like, oh, phew, and you're kind of relaxed for a moment, and then... Right. And then we kill him. And you then drop it into... And here's my complaint about it. You drop it into a book that, first of all, the idea of uh, hundreds of Batmen around the, <coughs> around the world is idiotic. I'm sorry. That's stupid. I couldn't get behind that. And if you disagree with me, fine. Fuck you, then. That's a nice opinion you have there. Too bad it's wrong. But if you do disagree... And you have been reading Batman Incorporated. By all means, you guys know how to get in touch with us. It's questions at PeachBasement.com, Facebook.com backslash PeachBasement, and follow us on Twitter. Uh, but the fact is, I have not been reading Batman Incorporated, so I have no idea who this masked villain is in the gas mask or whatever, who he is, why he's significant. I was told that he's like some sort of clone of Damien. Why is Damien's own mother out to get him in the first place? I don't understand anything and, of what's going why on. Why did he die in, in Incorporated, not Batman or Robin? Yeah, why? that's another is question. There, is there a sp I have no idea. The book just it's felt it. awkward. It felt like he was just being thrust it's, in just to die. It says like life. Is it? Is there's no way that this was a plan between the two of them to make it look like he's dead, right? Like Probably between not. Batman and Robin to make it seem like he... Could it be a plan between Damien and Talia? But I don't think so. The way they wrote Talia at the end of the story where she was kind of crying and... It seemed genuine. You know, she wasn't around Batman to have, to have needed to pull an act like right. that. She's by herself, maybe. Yeah. Right. I don't but know. I think this I feel... is also the fact that it happened in Batman Incorporated is why you couldn't find your issue because... Well, at least when Captain America died, Captain America was a big seller. So Captain right. America, in Captain America, there were a lot of issues around for people to pick up. This is not as big a seller. If they had it in Batman, you could have gotten your issue. Pro yeah, because you know, a larger print run, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're getting more copies in in Midtown, by the way. 
<laughs> I, I had to ask that too. By I, I also we'll learned about uh, what you call it, uh, first and second printings. I'm not sure how many people know about this, uh, but it is a fairly obvious um, answer. If you look at the barcode, if it ends in a two on really? top of the second printing, yes, that's true. I did not know that. I didn't know that either. We're and, getting more first printings in. And it. something like if it printing. starts with a two on top, it's it's a variant cover or something. No, or there's a two. The, <laughs> the two, the last two numbers, one of them is for printing and one of them is for cover. And I don't remember which one's which. It's the second to last one that's the cover. Okay. Because really, and the issue yeah. number is in there too. Like here, Pretty you can see this is number three. Oh, no one. shit, yeah. First and it's the first print, first cover. Yeah. Huh. No shit, man, that's what really cool. Thought? I didn't. I never knew that until, you know, this this time when I was kind of bitching about losing out on this issue. And I, all, I didn't even want it for the collector's value. I didn't want to flip it on eBay to make fucking 26 bucks on it. Because I'm not crying. It's going for like 30 bucks, give or take. Are you kidding me? I mean, I'm not crying for fucking $25. I just wanted to read the goddamn story. You know, I, I wanted to know how he fucking died. And, you know, he's, he's like flying through the air. He's fighting this dude who he's obviously no match for. He's like, you know, some crazy assassin in the, in the Guild of Shadows or wherever the fuck those guys are from Rachel Ghoul's, you know, clan or whatever. Right. Yeah. Shadows, right. And he just jumps at, the, jumps at the guy and he fucking just stabs him. Yeah. It was too quick. It was really quick. It was like watching it, Manhunter. I'm telling you, that book felt yeah. like it was there just basically the whole purpose of that book was just to kill him. Which it did, like you know, sometimes they like you tell them a story, you do a misdirection or something like right, that. Right, and then all of a sudden, oh boy. Yeah, yeah right. but no, it just felt like here's Damien running in, and all of a sudden he's like, I'm gonna fight, like you said, I'm gonna fight this guy that's gonna be horribly mis, right. you know, I'm under, you know, overmatched. I'll, I'll tell you what, right now, he's a fucking, you know, he's supposed to be like this great 11 year old warrior or whatever, and. I've been doing martial arts for 17 years, and the first fucking thing that they ought to teach you is I don't care how many black belts you have, I don't care what you know, the guy's bigger than you, he's gonna fucking win. Unless you outsmart him or get the fuck out of there. Not if you're Ed O'Neill. Or if you're Ed O'Neill, you know, yeah. you can just jujitsu his ass. But my one problem with jujitsu is you're busy rolling around on the floor with the guy, and his, his friend comes off and kicks you in the face. Well. It's a very personal mm -hmm. fight. And sometimes that doesn't happen in the street. That's, that's the only drawback of that art. It's but hasn't Damien consistently defeated people who are bigger than him? Well, he, he did wipe the floor with most right? of the other Robins. Mm -hmm. This guy was like, I think he was a Damien or something. He's like, you're my brother or something. You, you, you will know me or whatever. He said something like yeah, that. But everybody he fought had to be bigger than him, right? Does anybody? He's, unless he's, well, he's, he's, this big. Years unless old. he's beating up he's not four like Puck. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> True. But uh, I, I do want to see... Where where they go with this and how it affects I Batman? Can, honestly, this will turn out to affect him more than Death of the Family will, Grant. and that's unfortunate because Death of the Family is a better story. That's what but it's going to be. It's it was supposed to be a to, catalyst. Was, to, you didn't even give Death of the no, Family sorry. any time to even have any relevance. Right. You, you just, just it was like, oh, there's going to be lasting repercussions for the family. What like they all just weeks. left his ass. Like, no, bro, we can't talk right now. I, I don't even want to. Never mind. Joker fucked with me. Forget about it. No. And they'll just go on a second. And then ways. it's like Nightwings in Pittsburgh? What is it? Philadelphia or something? So maybe. One of those Pennsylvania cities? I think so. Weird. So there's See? No the concept of Pennsylvania like just shuts everybody down. It does. You think of a cheesesteak, you get that little food coma thing going, you're done. Mm. But let's go on to my book of the week, Punisher War Zone 5. Fun. Absolutely. Fun. Fun. I I, you know me, I love the Punisher, and the, the way that all of these characters that are just way out of his league, like he just outsmarts so many more powerful guys than him, and only Spider-Man is really like, you guys are fucking, like, you're walking into a trap, boom. Not like the booty traps. The booty traps? Booty traps. Booby or booty? Booty traps. That's what I said, booty, booty traps. Booty, like, your ass? Ass? I'm oh. confused. Goonies, dude. Goonies. Oh, he's a <laughs> speech impediment. He's doing Missed like a, it. Yeah, totally went over sorry. your head. Yeah, sorry, man. But the fact, like, there was a lot of but great no, lines traps. in the book. Um, like Iron Man, when he, he was like, you know, first of all, he sneaks into my building by cutting off the electricity, like the, the connection between the city grid and... You know, and the Star Corporation, which I have to admit is brilliant. And then he hits me on the head, duct tapes my mouth, ties me up, and sticks me in the jam pantry. And like Spidey's like, you had a, jam, a pantry yeah, jam just pantry. for jam? Yeah. So there was, it was like, when he was fighting Thor, and Thor's like, you know, you, you've obviously met your match now. Why don't you just give it webbing? 
Where do you get the webbing from? It's great. Now, do you think they're pulling punches because he's a human? Well, yeah. I mean, they like, must be because I would say so. Because otherwise, under, the Avengers would, 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 would have to be able to just. The fact is, I think they quickly. were purposely pulling their punches because they don't want to hurt him, and he's exploiting that right. to the point where they don't even know how to deal with it. It wasn't really explained that way, though. I think they should have explained it better that way. Because they made it. But seem I think like if they, they seem like they're they like, like don't like hurt him were, or whatever, they made it seem like they were a little like dumber than normal. Like he was because they they just figured you know what he doesn't have any kind of superpowers he's he's a human he's who's a fucking only, guy with a gun but who's the only one really that's had to deal with the Punisher is it's Spidey, Spidey and Black Widow yeah she was one of the only ones who was like don't don't underrest oh and Logan yeah oh and you know what I would say also about that book that I found very interesting that was my first experience with Punisher Warzone and um, I had you know I didn't read any of the other issues and I got to tell you jumping right into that and just it I found it fun. I you, really sh did. you should really go back yeah. and read the other four because they are just as They basically send each one after him one by one. I'm probably going to end up going That's back good. and checking the, them the out. The one, issue four, was it issue four or three with Thor when they just sat down for beers? I thought it was four. <laughs> yeah, I thought, they sent Thor after. Like, I thought it was Black Widow was three and I thought Thor was four. I'm not sure. Maybe because nice. he, he beat up Spider-Man in the first one. Mm. Wolverine took a bomb for him to kind of let him know that, yo, they're coming for you now. Mm -hmm. uh, they sent Black Widow after him in part two. And I, I'm, I'm think it was maybe three. Oh, but uh, like they at this point they're like, all right, you beat Black Widow, you beat Spider Man. Now we're pulling out the big guns, and all you see is just like you know Thor with his fucking hammer in the panel. It was a good you know very melodramatic panel, and he comes to him and he's like, listen, you're a warrior like me. Hey, you obviously can't beat me. Let's talk this out. And they just chill over some beers, man. It, like it was, it was very out of character for Thor, but it was very in character at the same time, mm -hmm. and. And I was just like a re yeah, because four was the whole. They had arrested Alves already, and she was being sent to the death. She was getting the death, death penalty, penalty at that right. point. So now he had to bust her out. I think four was when he was busting her out. Right, and minutes. four, since it's no spoiler, only for you, but I'll tell you anyway. Thanks. Um, but you knew about it already, like because he he had the Iron Man armor. He was oh, yeah. in the armor. Yeah. When Iron Man is uh, like looking after Sergeant Alves, and they expected her to, they expected him to go after her, mm -hmm. but. She was Black Widow, kind of at that point in the van. So you know he gets these other guys to attack the van to kind of you know cover for him, and then Spidey's looking after you know Sergeant his partner, and obviously he's like, all right, Iron Man, we got to get her out of here, and he's like, boom, like, hits him with a fucking repulsor blast. He's like, Tony, what are you? Ah, oh, shit, it's you. <laughs> Is nice. that her name Cole? Cole Alves, oh, yes. Oh, okay. That's her first. Because you remember she, I took my husband's name. Yeah. I, I don't have a husband. But yes, you do. No, I don't. Even though that is legal in New York now, mm -hmm. it's good for, good for them because there's a lot there's a lot more shit that people need to worry about, and everybody should have the right to be miserable if they want to, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. But uh, Punisher Warzone is great. Uh, I don't know how they're going to relate now. He he ends off in like a maximum custody. security custody, yeah. prison, but yet he's going strong in Thunderbolts. So don't know. Is Thunderbolts take place in the future? Who the fuck knows? Marvel continuity. What? Stan Lee is just digging a grave so he can spin in it. As See, far as continuity goes, that stuff doesn't really goes. bother me as much anymore I, because I, it's a story. Just take it for what it is. And, and it's it's on. a gigantic universe at this point. It was much smaller in the sixties. You 60s. have to worry about yeah. continuity. It was just a really great story, and I'm one of the biggest Punisher fans mm. there is. You talking? I'm not a big Punisher fan. Stature or no? Uh, you're, him? Doing, you're doing short jokes. Him? Fuck! Are you kidding me, douche? I'm like an inch taller than him, so it's not even... Let's talk about some more killers. Uh, Jennifer Blood, 23, uh, which is just about 13 or so issues longer than this title ever needed to it be. It says the end at the end, so I'm not... But it's I'm, not ending, Steve. But I'm done. It's, it's like the Doors song. It just keeps going, even though it says it's It stopped the being end. good after issue 10, 12. After she killed her uncles, which was the heart of the story. It was the Garth Ennis part of the story, and then they just ran with it. Like, okay, I, I like the idea of them making consequences of she killed her uncles, and, you know, there's still going to be cops after her, and she's not going to live happily she ever after. She became unlikable. She was yeah, that was, that was the problem. Was, you really started to wait for this fucking cunt to get her goddamn head blown off. Or something. Like... I didn't read it, so I know nothing. The whole concept was like her her uncles were mafia guys. They killed her father, and she wanted revenge. And she okay. did one by one. She got them. Yeah, that should have been it. But yeah, that was Punisher it. style, just yeah. off them. Okay. Very cleverly, very colorfully. Okay. 
But and then there was some other stuff. Then she killed her husband, right? Or something. Yeah, because uh, the cops were after her, so she had a. He found out. She was afraid he was gonna, I guess, yeah, get and, flipped. And she, know. she, they, she was afraid that they were gonna take her kids away, because he was calling the cops, and she killed her husband, and like the kids kind of saw it, and so then she kidnaps her kids, and it was like just. I don't remember that. Part, I guess though. it was like very. I don't know. Could this actually happen in America? No. Are there people that nuts? It's not gonna. It would. She, it was a little outlandish. But she's in prison. She's been convicted and she's in prison. So shouldn't that be the end of the story? Well, she gets iced in prison. She gets fucking shivved by a right. bunch of crazy women after poking some other broad's eyes out. But now, yes, her story apparently is over. And now they're going to tell a story about her son. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. No, not for me and him. No, but it, it's... Well, you think it'll go to 25? They'll just like tell a story about her, her son, then they'll tell a story about her daughter, and then hopefully fucking end the shit? Yeah, you gotta pick up two more issues to find out. It depends on whether or not it makes money. Yeah, I guess so. Like, if it makes money, they'll keep going. If it doesn't make money, they're gonna like make a prologue it. Type of thing? No, they're already doing Jennifer uh, Jennifer First Blood. With you know, like her origin story or whatever. Like I guess how they killed her father in the first like place. It. Yo, man, it's the Lord is a good writer, man. He did Rocky and Rambo. It's a beef, yo. And the expendables. Any yo, expendables is off the hook, man. Both. Do you have some cotton balls in your mouth? <laughs> I went to the dentist. He forgot to take the cotton out. I would take oh, this from you with my hand. <laughs> Come on. I could. I. Gah. Men. Do. Do me a favor. In. Do this. No, it's not. Robin it's Hood. Tonight? Yes. Nice. Stop the Louise. It was a scene that had nothing to do with any other scene. That's why I yeah. Yeah. remember. It was Don Fulion or something from Jersey. I don't remember. Uh, still a classic movie altogether. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 2. That's some good stuff. I like it, man. I love it. I Although, right. I'm going to tell you... Why do you like it? I don't get it. I like the fact that Magneto kind of turned on him because he knows Scott's just... He is not... But it's, to me, the whole thing's boring. I don't know. Like They're, they're going around finding mutants. Which it's it's kind of funny. Wait, 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 wait. I love it. I thought it was cool. It's all right. It's all right. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate but... It just, it's just, okay, they're going around, they're finding new mutants, and the Avengers are going to now confront them. It just seems boring. Like, it doesn't seem like there's anything going on that's... Well, I mean, there's what's going on between him and Emma. That's interesting. I don't care about that. What's, what's going to happen with Magneto, which, by the way, him going bald pisses me off. Yo, he had, he had the fucking awesome locks, man. What's up? Yeah, exactly. Seriously, well, he huh? He shaved it, I'm assuming. It's not that he Yeah, but bald, is but... he doing it because it's now he's trying to become Charles? Oh... Like, uh, really? I didn't think of that. Uh, that's what that's... needs to break his legs, too. Or something. I thought it was because Ramita was really bad at drawing hair. No, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's that he's trying to become, you know, now my good friend Charles, who I've tried to kill But he doesn't even look like himself. Times. He looks like Lex Luthor. No, he, he does. Kinda look like he doesn't Lex even Luthor. look like himself. The pit thing that pisses me off is that Magneto has no reason to be depowered. He was not affected by the Phoenix Force. Why did That's they the just depower the, the most powerful mutant on the planet? That's the other thing. The, the team is not, there's no, I mean, I think magic, not magic. Um, one of the Eliana. Couple, Eliana mm -hmm. has powers, but, yeah. but she's she's the only one who Cyclops gained powers. And Emma Frost's powers are going like in, in Everybody's around. powers are going haywire. So, I don't know. It just seems, is this an excuse to tell a story, like for, yeah. you know, whatever, but... I don't know. Everybody that got affected by the Phoenix, okay, you, you, your powers are fucky. And isn't, well, Col is Colossus having problems in X-Force? Oh, uh, you know, I'm not reading X-Force. Uh, our good buddy Captain Sweatpants was a fan of X-Force. Uh, what's going on with Cable and X-Force, guys? <laughs> Excuse me. I haven't started Let us know. I haven't backed up. I haven't gotten... I have them. I haven't read them yeah. yet at all. I'm so backlogged. Neither. You reading X-Force? No, I'm not reading X-Force. Mm. I liked the... the I'm gonna say a guy's name wrong. Reminder. Rem Rick Reminder. Yeah, I loved his X Force. Series. Oh, his X Force. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Regular X. -Force. And like, but Except when it got the to the Britain thing, was yeah. that was towards the end. That was like you know everybody gets one. Yeah. You know, like, eh. But uh, like the first shit with Apocalypse and everything, and I, I don't know. Phantom X was just a badass character to me. Like, oh, I, what's I going don't on with him now? There's a no female idea. Phantom X, isn't there? Yeah. I have no fucking clue. Because his brain was three parts, and now apparently they've all been split and. Like, Didn't they do that shit with like Psylocke too? They made Re made Revenant and or well, Maverick or was it another yeah. one or some Those shit? Sound like I, dressings. I have a question about Magneto in Uncanny X Men, yeah. and it's part because you know you read one book and then you wait a month and you read the other one, and I can't remember what happened. But in the first issue, doesn't he? He's in the Shield helicarrier, right? Mm -hmm. He's like a prisoner. No, no, no. He, no. he, he went, went to the willingly. He just went there and is hanging out with him. Then he leaves to be their mole. Or? Yeah, pretty much. Because oh. now in the second one, she's. Um, 
he, like, you know, Cyclops is going to reunite this one mutant girl with her family who is accepting of the fact that she's right. a mutant and she wants to, you know, see her family again. And so they're going to, like, I don't know, fucking Australia or some shit. And Magneto gets on, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll meet you there or whatever. And he gets on the horn and he's like, Australia. And the last page is Captain America and, and everybody the Avengers Avengers assemble. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. It's always a good idea when the X-Men go to Australia. It's I like the awesome. fact that... Like, being the biggest Magneto fan, probably, uh, definitely in the room and, you know, probably at any random Comic-Con, I like the fact that he, the reason he's turning against him is not because he doesn't like Cyclops or what. he just doesn't feel that he is the face that mutant kind needs mm -hmm. right now. That's there is cool. somebody else that could, that would be better he suited. Cyclops is broken. He's yeah. Bro he's like, he, and I like the and fact And this coming like, from one of the biggest psychopathic mutant murderers there is. And I like the fact that he goes, you know, it's like, don't kill him. You kill him, you're making him a martyr. You have to let everyone see that he is a broken individual. You gotta fucking break him down in public. Yep. I like it. Yeah, but is that comic book stuff? That seems just like, it doesn't... It's a little political. It doesn't interest me. I don't know. But... It's a Magneto story, but how so long I'll can bite. it go on? Like, if it's like a few more issues, it's, it's got to be probably a five or six. But this is right this. This is going to be like twelve more issues Aye. of this. <laughs> no, it is. It, it is. Talk it, talk it, talk it. It is too slow, I think. I do want to see Magneto get his powers back because oh. you know they should. Know, they all need their powers back. I'm sorry. Great, why are we wa watching if they don't have powers? Then we might as well. Hmm. You know. One of the best lines in that book is when Ileana shows up. And when Scott and Emma are having their little argument, Tiff. and she's like, so are, are you guys a thing again? And they're like, no. And then she's like, okay, because they want to have a meeting. And then all of a sudden, like, she scoots over, and she's like, all right, well, come here, come. And then she does her little lightning bolt disappearing act. And Emma, Emma and Scott are just looking up where she was, and she's like, Emma goes like, she scares me. <laughs> and Scott's like, well, she's been through a lot. And Emma goes, no, we've all been through a lot. She still scares me. I don't know if there's something with the way it's drawn, which, by the way, I'm not a Bocello fan. I do not like him. But I actually kind of am enjoying his art in this book, too. I think too. it fits, maybe? I it's, think yeah. so. You know, maybe. Uh, it's, I thought it was Romita. No. no Looks so just like, just like it. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's Bocello. Very square, kind yeah. of. That's, that that's kind of, yeah. It's, I didn't oh. even pay attention. I just, I looked so quick at, you know, Magneto's bald-ass head, and I'm like, oh, Romita. Yeah, no, no. Romita would be wow. boxers, like just play boxers. It, it yeah. looks pretty boxy to me. Not that, yeah, not quite that boxy. I love, I love uh, Bacello, Bacalo, I don't know. Whatever. Stuff. Yeah, but I, I, love, I love his like Magneto, Magneto. splash pages. <laughs> Submariner. No, it's because he's really a hip cat. It's Magneto. Oh. Represent? Yeah. Right. I used to pronounce it Magneto. So yeah, I did too. Bacalo is his, I think his storytelling is very murky. And he often, I, he does like, like, the close-ups of something that is happening, and I don't know what it is, and then it cuts to another close-up, and I really, I have a hard time following The him. paneling. His is paneling just, yeah. is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ever since Generation X, I've had a, he's been confusing He's not a me. good storyteller. Mm -hmm. He could be a good artist, but he's not a good storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. So his cover paneling is an art all, of, yeah. all in its own, is being able to depict what the fuck is going on. And, you know, the only time that you ever really saw good paneling, and I'm going to segue real quick, is I, I've been reading these haunted horror books, which is... Um, you said the only time? Well, I, I'm going to go way off subject, is the, the reason. Yeah. As in, one day. As uh -huh. One day. As yep. He already knows. Yep. Look, the, these books reprint all of these really old, obscure horror stories, and they'll tell you which ones that the shit is in. That were originally, what, 10 cents? Or yeah, give or take, like, Web of Evil number 2, January 1953, Hangman's Horror. And these are all, like, you know, pre-code shit, but this is storytelling. This is very traditional paneling. None of these crazy, diagonal, crazy motherfucking shit's going on. It's just box, 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 box. A lot of word balloons, but you know what the hell's going on. And look at this evil-looking motherfucker right there. You know he's up to some shit. He's the bad guy. his eyebrows. Damn right. Oh, and that schnoz... He's got the villain stash, bro. Yeah. He's got the villain stash. And nobody smokes them cigarettes out of that thing. Yeah, they do. Who did that? Uh, Corella DeVille. You know she was badass. She had the fucking long cigarette thing. His name was Devil. Exactly. Well, wait, FDR did Cruel that devil. too, though. Did he? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. What are you saying about FDR? He smoked the big... Yeah, I don't like him. Get him off the dime. I was going to say he's a cripple, but I knew that shit was going to get edited. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could come up with. See, kids, cigarettes kill. Don't smoke. Smoke pot smells better. Just don't do it all the time. But you know Chester Brown? He's a Canadian alternative cartoonist. No. And he used to do... Uh, he did all sorts of uh, like uh, autobiographical comics, and he would 
mess with his panel placements. He said to keep it interesting. And then he read a whole bunch of Little Orphan Annie comics, and it's all nine panel grid, or it's all like, because they're comic strips, so it's mm -hmm. all just Eight? three panel, three page, three panels, and then arrange on a page. And he's like, this is fascinating to me. You don't need to mess with the panels. And he switched his, his style up, and now it's all grid like. That's really Look at Watchmen. Watchmen's all, Watchmen's all a grid, right? Yeah. You don't need yeah. to. You don't and need it to works. It. Like, yeah. you, you don't need to try and be dynamic with the panels if you know how to tell a story and you, you can draw. It's not even always Small. necessarily a grid. It's just that they might not, the next scene that's happening might not make sense from the one part. You know. I find that a lot more, you know, in modern comics. Like, I'm looking at a panel and I'm like, Maybe they in their heads yeah, know going what's on going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess this is the image revolution, right? Where artists to, yeah. decided they don't need editors. Right. And it, it may not have been the best decision. <laughs> and editors decided they were entirely too powerful. I might be totally dating myself on this one. Okay. It's disgusting. So Steve was kind of, he went like this, and he started smelling it, yeah. right? Love the smell of old comic books. Well, no, not, not, the, old com it's not the old comic book smell. Remember the old like cassette paint. when you got a cassette? Oh, yeah. And you popped open the cassette, and you've got the new cassette smell? Yeah, yeah, like a plastic. Uh, it totally has yeah. it. Yeah, Can I smell yeah. my book? It's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously that's actually not the weirdest friends thing I've asked you since you got down here. Comics. <laughs> we haven't seen Pete in about two, three weeks. He's sniffing them books again. What? Uh, since Steve picked it up, let's move on to Fantastic Four, which is uh, no FF. It's the same shit. Yeah. FF Fantastic Four. Like, He's going to talk about them both. I and I'm not against. I would never say I liked it when I didn't like it. So it's not just because I'm biased, but I actually do like. At first, I was against it, like them going into space and then them. For four minutes, having this new team, obviously that got screwed up, and they're stuck there at this point. Of course, but they I, are. but I, they could still come back four minutes later, because that's, that's right. The deal. But um, but they haven't. It's been it's been a couple of days at least now. But I actually do like it. It's, I do too. But really I mean, good. as far as the time stream goes, whenever they fix it, they can still come back four minutes exactly. later. So it never happened in the first place. Right. I'm gonna make your brain leak. Well, Mar Marvel would never eliminate a whole bunch of continuity and undo it by some kind of. By that's magic. ridiculous. No, it's, it would never happen. <laughs> Be but, I'm done interrupting you. But that's okay. I but, promise. But um, really, I'm done interrupting. I'm, I'm good now. I'm gonna listen. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic Four obviously is about them. He can't. He can't, he can't, can't walk over here and hit me. <laughs> and the kids. Um, Reed has cancer on his arm. He doesn't know exactly what kind of kind it is or how to cure it. So I think they under that's the stuff killed Captain Marvel. That's no joke. That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he can't cure that. So under the guise of going to space just for like exploration or like that, he's actually I think looking for the cure. So he told Ben, and he told I think at the end of the fourth issue, he's telling Susan. Mm -hmm. But um, they're on some planet now, and they're kind of worshiping them because they see some cave painting with the Fantastic Four, and they don't know where it came from. But you find out that Reed actually went back and did it for something. We don't know exactly why. But that's happening in Fantastic Four, and in FF... Um, Wait, did he go back and paint the whole thing or just add a heart to it? I thought he painted the whole thing. What I, did thought he just, I thought he just the face oh, of no, the heart. I, I got the impression he painted the whole thing. Maybe he did. I have to look at it. He's kind of saying, that, I know this is not um, moral, whatever he was saying. Right, I thought he was adding the heart. I may have read this really quickly right before we started filming. Um, so that, and then FF is, what, Medusa, She-Hulk, Ant-Man, and some character that they just made up. She-Thing or whatever? She-Thing. It's some costume. Okay, the rationale is that she, they made a costume. She's a cosplayer with delusions of grandeur? She's a cosplayer with... No. When, when Ben is in his normal human state, uh -huh. there was a time frame where he couldn't go back to the thing, so they uh -huh. built a costume. Was I remember that. That was, that was like early 90s, late 80s kind of story. It was of, lame, uh, but, that's, story. but that's kind of what she's using as, as she thing. Whatever. That looks pretty nice, actually. It's Bagley. Ah. Yeah, it's my Bagley. Which, by the way, I'm sorry, and I said this, um, I love Bagley. But Reed Richards is totally Peter Parker. Only in the flashbacks. Only in the flashbacks. Well, yeah. Cause well, no, then he's Richard Parker <laughs> in the <laughs> in the current. The father? Yeah, his father. Yes. She thinks a great visual, though. I love when she's in this. Well, yeah, she's the, got, and the artwork is good. I like yeah. it. At first, I was kinda, it was kind of iffy. But like here, when she's... So she's going on a date with, um, I can't think of the guy's name. What, Wyatt Wingfoot. Wyatt Wingfoot. Who's it's very kind of classic-y looking, you know? Like, right. I'm sorry. I know you guys love him. I cannot. I, yeah, this is my nice. fun. It's fun. I, I yeah. can't get into no. his, his work. Who, this guy? Yeah. Michael Elrod? Elrod? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess his wife or his sister is a colorist. But I like the colors, too. That's why it's good. But they like her. They call her. What do they call her? Miss. I forget what they call her, but um, they have a crush on her, so they're following her. Like, this Aww. one is just fun. Like, that's this, fun. You know, 
Well, so. the friend of mine was just talking about his idea of a perfect Batman book would be a Silver Age Batman story where Batman and Batwoman are going on a date and the Joker shows up as their waiter and tries to mess it up. And this <laughs> very much fun. reminded me of that idea. Yeah, they're trying to screw up the date yeah. every which way and they just keep getting... They, it just keeps getting foiled. So they try to That's wake him some, I, I like some old creature, that. but the creature is not powerful at all. He's just a big dopey thing. So that falls through. They try changing the weather, that falls through. So it's just, it's fun. And I guess Medusa's up to some shit at the end. Yeah, I don't know what that is. So I don't know exactly what's going on there. But well, also, like, Human Torch came back from the future. Oh, yeah, Human For Torch came back from the future. Was it in this or was it in that? Previous one. Oh, it's, it's in this, it's but in it's in the right? previous issue. Some, there's some sort of doom... Mechanical Doom, what is he like? There's some, I guess Doom, a couple of other powerful entities formed an alliance and they killed the Fantastic Four and Human Torch is the only one that survived. Uh -huh. It's kind of almost like the, all the story in reverse where he died. So he came back and that, the thing closed up so they can't come back and they're dead. But uh -huh. like you said, who knows if they... They'll come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not dead. You tolerate it because it's the Fantastic Four and they do like but, the time But what they want to do is since Doom was responsible for this in the future, they want to kill Doom now. I think that's a cool idea. I don't know if they won't do it. Or, no, they won't. But where is old Doom anyway? I thought he was trapped in uh, another dimension. They make it seem like he's at Live Area. He's, huh. he's home. But I don't know. I think he I was mean, shot with him. Well, magic. remember, I think trapped him in time. Listen, I, I was going to say you know that when Daredevil went there, and wasn't he there? Wasn't he around when they when they took Daredevil and like. Oh took his yeah, abilities? in like the late teens, kind of early twenties issue, he around, wasn't yeah, it? Was, Maybe mid like something like that. I remember that, yeah. And yeah, no, I, I know what you're talking about. But it was it wasn't even Doom. It was Doom subordinate. It was uh, he was like trying to like he was the fucking one who was trying to like you copy Matt it? Murdock's radar sense. Yeah, which yeah. actually that's he's got to be the guy behind this whole fucking shit that's but going that's on having, in Daredevil now. That's having repercussions now. Yeah, I, just so. had, I feel like I had an epiphany just now. Like that moment. Because you see, the problem is, like, oh, I read so much shit and I, I tend to forget what happened. So I do have to read that previously in stuff. But you just reminded me. It was like that crazy old mad scientist yeah. in Doom's Fortress. And, but they successfully did it, though. Yeah. He escaped, and now, right? like, you read the new Daredevil, right? Yeah. You read Daredevil? No, no. He, he goes up against, it was a one issue thing. He goes up against these, like, criminals who were given Matt Murdock's radar sense by dousing them with, you know, toxic mm. chemicals. Sure. Hmm. And they don't know how to handle it, so they're like, you know, total virgins to this, right, and they're no going practice. crazy because they're hearing everything, they're seeing things that are just weirding them out and everything, but he takes them down pretty quickly. But you're kind of sitting there like, who the hell's behind this the whole time? He's got to be the guy doing it. And I brought it up last week when, uh, you know, Foggy Nelson has cancer, uh, but you get so the idea at... Yes. Well, he, the idea is like maybe they're, like they're messing Wooden with Matt Murdock. Like everyone had AIDS. Mm. Just, some people want to do it. Kill them all. Eh. Everyone has a disease. Um, like humanity in itself is a disease. Save the planet, kill yourself. Um, the the idea was like he you know he brings Foggy Nelson to the doctor. But watch Pete's basement before you do it. Though. Totally. <laughs> um, he, he Foggy Nelson and Matt Murdock go to the doctor, and the doctor's he, he's listening to the doctor's heartbeat, and he's getting nervous. He's like, oh no, you know, the, he, he, Foggy's heartbeat's going crazy. He's going crazy. Like, oh wait a minute, it's not Foggy. And then the doctor's like. I'm sorry. So you kind of what left wondering is, was it the doctor's heartbeat and Matt was just kind of a little screwed up because the doctor was nervous about telling yeah, Foggy that he's got cancer? Bad news. Or was it just not Foggy Nelson, period? Hmm. Hmm. Who is it then? Now, who the hell knows? Let's, just, let's write a letter to Mark Wade and ask him. Or we can just wait till next is month. Is it Mystique? I don't wait. Tune in next month. Dun, dun, dun. But before we go, Guardians of the Galaxy point one. I did not read this, but you did. I'm all alone on this. Yeah. All I right. haven't read Guardians of the Galaxy. The only experience I had with them was the Thanos Imperative from a couple of years ago. Okay, see, I, I, my only experience it with it was, like, that old one from, like, back in the 90s, like, the early 90s. Like, Major Victory? Yeah. Captain, like, the, the future Captain America? That and silver shit. cover, yeah. and, yeah, that I, that was one of those, I'm like, oh, it's going to be collectors, i got to get this one. Well, that, they drilled that into your head in the 90s. In yeah, most did. covers! Anyway. So, um, I'm not really a big Guardians of the Galaxy fan, but just seeing everything, like, all over the place, it was like, all right, you know what, let me see what this is all about. Um, as terms, it's like, first issues go, it's more of a flashback than anything else, and, uh... It's usually the way point one's where kind of an introduction. before you do flashback? Would yeah. it just be the beginning of the story? How is it a flashback? Well, it's all about... I this mean, is the beginning. Yes. The beginning. The beginning. So we see the, 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 the guy, the main what character, I forget his name, 
Um, you see him as a child and how he how he became. Um, so we get this alien crash lands in this woman's yard, front yard, and she comes running out and saves him. And they hook up because you know why not hook up with the alien? He's a good looking alien, so hey, why not? As far as aliens go, wow. yeah, they get a little something something going. Um, so he's like, it turns out that he's royalty on some uh, like on some planet, and he's like, I must leave you to go head back to the war that's waging between my 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 people and these other people, and. I, they go run or he's like, I leave you with this gun to remember me by. Because that's, that's what you do for yes. one Who's of on the team? Um, Maybe you do that. Iron Man. Texas. What? Yeah. Well, you should have closed the book as soon as you saw Iron Man. That was the last page. Book closed. <clears throat> no, that was the last page. Literally? Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I, so I did close it right after that. So it does work. <laughs> Who is on the team now? Iron Man. Okay. Remember, I don't pay attention. Right. The green guy. So it's the, the guy with the hat. Iron Man, the, the, the blonde guy, whoever the hell the damn blonde guy was, I don't remember his fucking name. So anyway, the where's Rocket thinks, Raccoon? In like the last page. He's in it though. He's he's in it. What about I am Groot, the tree dude? Hit the last page. I like Groot, man. Did you so, know Groot appeared in one of those early Marvels that was uh, pre-code before, like all the superheroes and everything? Really? Yeah, he was in. It was one of those old. Uh, it's not pre-code though. Tales it's, uh, it, it, it was coded. I think it's coded, but it's pre. It's pre superhero. Pre sixty one. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know it was coded. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Just... Yeah. So anyway, it's all about him being an angsty little, you know, little boy, and then he comes home one day and he finds out that these the aliens that were that he was the father was trying to avoid suddenly come down there because and the, and him as a boy he thinks his father just abandoned him. This is the kid that was, that's Nova, James Alexander. No, is he in? No, not Nova. Because he, I don't know. What I don't know. He's under the impression the his color. father abandoned him too. Color. That's a lot like Star Nova. Lord, it's I'm sorry. Star Lord. <laughs> of course, it's like in every single book, and of course, it's not in this one. Yeah, Star Lord makes sense. Anyway, so it's all about him and how like he he eventually goes and um, they kill his mom and destroy the house, and now he's got nowhere left, and he's like, I'm gonna go out into the the universe and find my father, and you know, be really pissed off and. You know, basically call you a deadbeat, and that's about where it starts off. Jack Flag is that one of the characters? That sounds about right. I don't know. Cosmo the space dog. No, no, definitely I not. I like that's Cosmo. Old, that might have been the old one. Co the dog talked with a Russian accent, or he thinked with a Russian accent. Really? Yeah, that's kind of cool. He must have been Russian then. He was. He was a Russian Cosmo dog. It was. Cosmo. Besides, you know, it was a Bendis oh, book, yeah, so it was all talking, not much action. <laughs> was Bendis writing that too? Yeah. He writes everything again. He, and they, I would they make him write everything, like for yeah. every couple of years. He writes every single title. He's the golden boy for a while. I liked the the Guardians of the Galaxy book back, you know, a couple of years ago, and then like uh, it 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 just stopped being printed after that whole Rift storyline mm -hmm. right, and the cancer verse and everything. But uh, so, would you say like you're gonna continue with it? You know, I've got a rule where. If I try out a new book, I give it three issues. Okay. And um, what if it's a four issue story? Arc? Does this count as an issue? If it doesn't count by the third issue, I can't. You know, that's that. So um, now you're only going to go to part, you know, issue two in this one because it's going to go point one, then one. It might even go to zero. Then yeah. what do you do? I don't screw. Do you, do you wait until issue three? Is it OCD? No, or it's true. Just, is it is it whole numbers or does it have to be just three issues? You know, it depends on the arc. If they go point one, point <laughs> two, point three. You know. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. I, our buddy Michael Stratlander had asked us uh, a long time ago if good art could save a bad book, and it's it's an interesting or point wreck you bring a good up. book for me. Hey, listen, it's pretty cold, man. I don't I don't like his artwork. That's like if Marcos Martin. I don't like his artwork. Nothing against you. You're probably a very nice guy. I just it's but that it's, old it's style. Hmm? No, it's classic to me. Yeah, I, it I is. Have no I issue just. With it. His faces look like different people. Like most people, yeah, yeah. artists, they draw one face. One for a boy, one for a girl. Oh well, yeah, everyone's got to be a Mike Turner clone, so. Yeah. Much as I hate to say it, I love Turner's art, but a lot of people look the same. Yeah. yeah. Also, Even Scott like Campbell. Raised yeah. on zero-G planets, and they're all eight feet tall. It's yeah. Really, they have like 12 feet tall. Oh yeah, no, tall. They, they definitely go like, not, like 10 heads high. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And that's all right. All Turner's women all have to be facing three quarters. And there, this doesn't move, but then the rest of the body down here moves. That's, he he that's, got better over time, man. He did, but his, his old Witchblade shit, you can see, like, but at, he got way better over time. I'm going to close out the show with these two nifty Hot Wheels that I got. I've been collecting some of these Batman uh, Hot Wheels cars for a while. The only one I don't have is the original 1989 from, I think it was like the Series 2 
uh, Batman cars, and it was. Open. Oh well, I'm, I'm gonna get to that. Uh, and that shit is going for like fucking 50, 60 bucks online. Really? The, the, the Keaton Batman book. Uh, the Keaton Batman car, but I got a couple more up there behind Steve. How much? The uh, original, like 50 bucks, man. These things are like eight to ten dollars. You want to see every toy collector on as, as our fan have a fucking heart attack right now? I don't believe toys should be kept in the box, man. I don't. I don't nah, they turned evil. I saw Toy Story too. It's a documentary. Love it. This shit especially, man. This is this is the Batmobile I grew up with. It was the old superpower shit right there. I love it. I had that. That's up there somewhere. Oh, nope, there it is. That is my original toy from 1985, and this one's gonna go right next to it because I got a little OCD like that. Yeah. And I'll move it next time I come. And put you it will. Down. You're gonna put it upside down, you fuck. That's what Steve does, man. He just moves shit. He just puts shit upside down, or he sticks notes in places. It's really mm -hmm. weird. I remember the notes. Yeah, I That's found notes in my freezer. I just I left this here on you know August 15, 1997. I'm like you son of a bitch. Uh, Hal, thank you for being hey, on the you show, so man. Me. Lots of luck with the blessed. book, and come back anytime. Hopefully, we have not frightened you away. It was not too. So, scary. give the name of the book again. Immortal Lycanthropes. You can like it on Facebook, which has <laughs> some nebulous benefit to me. Cool. Go do that. It takes a second, and you'll find a link on our Pete's Basement Facebook as well. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Take care, and thank you again to all of our Indiegogo contributors. My hat is off. Thank you for your generosity. Yes. Yes. I will collect all the hats! I think I'm right. <laughs> Supplies! That was the greatest line that. ever. That was excellent. <laughs> We don't need those thinking badgers. It's all downhill from here for you now, sir. You've started to think like me. 20 minutes in the basement, you're already doomed. Hello. 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 Pete, I just gotta tell you, this is this is driving me insane. I I can't take it anymore. I I wet myself. <laughs> Every guest says that. Now I'm gonna talk in this voice the whole time. <laughs> Let me tell you something else, Dave. This isn't my real speaking voice. <laughs> this is my real speaking voice. I'm straight up gangster, bitch. Thank you, thank you, and fuck you! Dennis Leary. NyQuil, NyQuil, we love you, you, you giant, giant fucking Q. If you think this country's taxes are high now, it's where I get through it. Duck soup. Very good. Whatever it is, I'm against it. No matter who proposes One of these days, I'm gonna do that song on this show, I'm telling you right now. I do it at work, once a week. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good idea, I never thought to do it at work. Yes. People come over, ask for something, right to the side. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style. Go ahead, Pete, talk. Yo, oh man, that, I really am loud. <laughs> wow, I'm hitting the red, dude. I'm gonna, this is just my normal voice, it just hasn't even gone down. You know how long last week's week was? Hour, I watched it. Yeah. Exactly. That was exactly my exactly fault, because I, I just ranted for a half hour. And that was As opposed to any other show? Let's get the books out of the way. You got the rag, it's cool. It's, that's what it's for. Hey, nice shot. Sorry. This is when we have the Peach Basement is experiencing technical that difficulties. Been, that would have been great if that knocked over my glass. <laughs>